Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. Today I am doing a interesting pour. Um, <laughs> my husband decided we needed a coat rack in the laundry uh, and he said, and before I hang it up, you can pour on it if you like. I was like, thanks, doll. How's it getting any better than that? <laughs> so here we have it. We've got... It's from um, Kmart, just a cheap um, five peg pine and so the colours I've chosen to go onto this are, I'm going to use the Deco Art Americana and um, so I've got Titanium White Festive Green, Primary Blue, and then I just recently went and bought some Copper. Yummy! I love the Dazzling Metallics from Deco Art. They are divine! So, I've been asking lots of questions about what I want this to look like, and you know what? I don't actually want the points poured. I was thinking, do I do spiral, individual little spiral pores and let them run down and make these beautiful... Meh, meh, meh. No. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to just paint the background. And hey, if some of it splashes up the sides, all well and good. But my target is to get that baseboard done. and Because uh, there's going to be things hung on it. It's going to get a lot of wear and tear. It's, I haven't prepped it in any way, shape or form. As you saw, I just cut the... Um, the thingy what's it doohickey off the tag so the only prep I'm doing is mixing my paints with flow troll and water and putting this up here on on tins so that it can drip off so now that I've put on tins you can't see the whole thing so I'm going to pause it raise it up and let's get started okie okay, right so as I said, I have mixed these, well actually, the only one that's got any water in is the copper. And the copper, the met metallics are a lot runny, a lot thicker than the Americana paints. The Americana paints are a craft type style paint. And so they're already a liquid paint. So then when you, when you go to pour them, you don't need to add any water, you just do your flow troll or your acrylic pouring medium from Deco Art. You could use that as well. Um, I've run out, so I'm using flow troll again. Haven't found that in the shops in New Zealand yet. So we are going with this. Um, now, next thing we need is a vessel. And I'm searching high and low, and I can't find my bendy cup. So, we're going to have to go with something else. Um, you guys, you can use whatever you have on hand, quite honestly. If you're not going to kick yourself if it gets ruined, use it. That's my state of affairs. Um, I really have no point of view when it comes to making... To using thing. Um, <laughs> I bought something for the kitchen yesterday and I, I put it home and said and Glenn said, Oh, is that to pour through? And I said, uh well no, it wasn't the plan. And he said, Well you can, it's made of plastic, you can just wash it off again, we can still use it in the kitchen. And I was like, hmm. Oh, I love my husband. I'm so grateful he's in my life. <laughs> How did I get so lucky? So, uh, I can't find what I'm looking for, so I'm going to go with one of these. Um, I really have no idea how much these hold. They're a McDonald's slushy cup. Uh, and I know that that much paint with a white bed will cover a 750 mil square canvas. And you'll know that by now too if you follow my channel. Uh, 
I'm not putting a white bead on this first so I reckon if we've got about that much in there I know that we need more than a tin and there's my tins so I reckon if we go to the top of the little dude's head Ronald's head we should be about right um, and I'm just going to do a dirty cut pour how's it get any better than that so let's start and I really like the way this blue and white interact so we're going to go with that and then some and I haven't got any silicon in this what am I doing Oh, you guys are distracting me. How's it getting any better than that? So, let's stir those in. Do, 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 do. I was doing a pour the other day and I didn't remember to ah, hold on to the stick. No, that was today. Um, <laughs> I didn't remember to stir one of them in and I watched as this blob of oil went so careering over the edge of my tin as I poured it in and I was like ah oh. now for those of you that are wondering why is she putting oil into her paints um I'm guessing you're new to my channel so welcome and so what we do is we mix up our water-based paints and then we put a few drops of oil in and then what happens is the oil bubbles up you know oil always rises in water so the oil bubbles up through the paint and um, you get to have these beautiful cells hopefully I'll be able to show you that now because I've only done a couple of colors into our cup then it's not actually going to be a big problem because what's on there Oh, that's if I was doing a flip cup. Pause might be slightly different. But we should be okay. If we'd got to the... T if we'd finished putting all of our paint in and remembered, eh, you can still add it. You can get like a dropper and um, play with it and stuff. But the biggest target when you're doing this sort of painting is to get all of your paints that you well, there was a blob that went in there don't like blobs um, all your paints to be a similar consistency and if they're a similar consistency or the same thickness then they start to create yumminess if they're a different consistency that's when you can start to get one particular color taking over if it's a really if one of one of the colors is a lot runnier than the others um, you'll get that color taking over the painting if you've got um, if you've only put a little bit of that in it'll like run around all over the place and be weird all right, so that's got us to the top of the head. I do still have some green and some blue and some copper left. So if we need to top it up, we can sort of do the sides with those colors or whatever. And because I am doing a, um, a pour, I am actually going to stir it. If I was doing a flip cup, I wouldn't bother. But I'm um, just going to go around the sides and through and through. Check out that straw. Oops. Yeah. Can't see it because it's not focusing on the straw. He doesn't want to see the straw. Oh well. That's all good. Okay, let's zoom you out so you can see what I'm doing. And... Make sure you can see the whole thing. There we go. Okay. So, I'm kind of figuring if I do like a, a figure eight, 
sort of shapey thing going around we might get some interesting creations so Definitely got some cell action going on. Alright. Wow. I love this colour combo. Yummy, 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 yummy. There is a lot of paint on there, guys. And that is totally cool. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my leftover paint and just flip it and let it pour out onto this bit of card. See, it's just going to drain down onto there and we can play with that later. Wow, can you see these cells? Check it out. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. The whole thing is just yum, yum, yum. How does it get any better than this? That's a great question. So I don't think I'm going to need to tilt it much, but I am going to need to tilt it. Why? Because it's quite thick. So, and also I want to paint the sides. We've got some paint coming off already. Um, what I'm just doing is picking up a little bit of the paint off the sides that's fallen off. So it's the same paint and I'm just gonna run it along the sides. Why am I doing this? Because then when the paint hits the sides, it's going to go, oh, that's where I'm supposed to go. Okay. And <laughs> I'm not going to have it all run off in one place. Because there's going to be other places that have a liquid base for it to flow down through. And this is where I'm wishing that I had. A different method of doing this. All right, you know what I can do because I'm all my runoff is on that side. So I'm just going to pick this up and move it to there, <laughs> and then I can reach it. How clever is that? So when these colors mix together, they actually make a really beautiful. Um, aqua colour um, the primary green uh, primary blue and festive green and some white make a yummy yummy colour combination I'm very glad that Deco Art sent me these particular colours because they make cool colours I've actually found that if you mix these, the decor, uh, uh, the Americana Festive Green and um, Primary Blue together, you can actually get an almost, you can get, what's it called, Viridian Hue, basically. It's very cool. Alright, so now that I have got all my bits covered, let's tilt. I'm going to move you back into just moving a little bit because they are such beautiful cells that I don't want to disturb them <laughs> but I do need to get some paint into here because that is not 
flowing. And this one here as well needs a bit as well. Just teaching it how to flow with my finger. This is where you're supposed to go. So the amount of paint I've already got onto my pegs, I think I'm going to paint them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that lovely aqua that it becomes. back again down here guys come down this bit all right so there we go all right I just had somebody turn up on my doorstep so probably had about 10 minutes lapse since I was last with you and uh, you can hear him revving his engine as he leaves how's it getting any better so um, we in this in that time it has basically um, covered itself which is very exciting very easy so I'm just gonna run over it with the torch and just check and see that uh, what I am seeing though, it hasn't filled in behind here. So I'm just going to get my palette knife and pick up just a little bit of paint and drop it in there just to fill up that spot. Alright, so then when I tilt it back doesn't go anywhere it's dried on the spot no all right let's torch it so for those of you that are new the torching pops any air bubbles so you don't end up with holes in your paint at the end of the drying process but also if there's any silicon hiding down underneath there um, when the paint gets a little bit warm it comes up and says hello oh I'm seeing so this is actually drying a lot faster than it would normally on a canvas because the paint is being sucked dry by the by the wood. Um, if you want to avoid that, you need to prep your wood. Just noticing some spots that don't have any enough paint on them. Or any paint. Okay. Not too worried about this side because that's the bit that's going to be pointing downwards. But if you've been watching, since I've torched it, we've got new cells in this bit down here. So just going to. Finish that all off. And I've got so much paint on the stems, I am going to get a brush and just cover that up. Cover those little stems up with some of the drop off. And Give it a bit of colour. Oh, this brush is rather wet. Oops. Been used recently, obviously. That's not going to do good things for my painting to have water running into it. Try that again.
So what I'm doing is I'm putting the mixed paint that's all the colours mixed together on the end and then just dipping the brush into what's down below and dragging it up just so it gives it a little bit, it almost looks like it's growing out of the paint that's below it And I will show you this once I've finished so you can see what I mean. I'm even getting cells on my st stems. <laughs> How's it getting any better than that? So for those of you that are new, where that oil comes up and pushes through, and sometimes it happens just naturally because of the densities of the paint, um, it's what we call cells and uh, so if you hear somebody in acrylic pouring talking about cells that's these round bits that pop up out of the out of the paint and that's what acrylic pouring is kind of known for that look all right I'm still really aware of the fact that there's not much paint down here so I'm just going to turn it around so I can see the other side because I can't see ah, I'm glad I did there's some wood there running my finger along and getting the drips that are falling off and there's some wood all right I think we're done let me wash my hands and I'll get you down and show you all righty so first of all, I'm going to take you for a trip down memory lane. <laughs> Look at those. That's super cool. Now, one of the things you do need to remember when you're mixing your paints with Floetrol um, is Floetrol looks white when it's wet, but it dries see-through. So, uh, this is going to darken as it dries. Look, it even goes over the sides. Woohoo! So there you go, guys. Um, this is what I was meaning by the paint that looks like it's growing up the stem. Got, even got some tiny little cells in there. Look at those. Aren't they cute? I'll focus on that bit. There we go. So it's uh, just blending it all in makes it looks like it's all one piece, which is very cool. Oh, good spotting camera. There's a piece that's Hmm. So, here we go. 
and drag that up the side. Uh, let's just check that that yes, it is just glare at the bottom there. <laughs> How cool is that? I like it. What would it take to dry this awesome all better? So there you go guys. We have our coat rack all poured. And I will be back once it's dry to show you what it looks like. And that will be in three, two one all right here it is it has dried and looks awesome i'm so looking forward to having this hanging in the laundry uh see how the the paint's gone up the little stems just a little bit just to give it that sense of part being part of it not added later kind of deal so very pleased with this I'll wait a couple of weeks give it time to really harden the acrylic and then we'll varnish it and hang it up how does it get any better than that so, what can you paint on? What can you have fun with? And um, show us in the Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group. We'd love to see what you've been pouring on, all the weird and wacky things. And, um, and how much fun can we all have together? How much kindness and caring can we contribute to each other? What else is possible? I adore you all and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.